Hey everybody, Gareth here, FCP here. Welcome back to another DIY video. Today we're going to be doing front brakes on an F82 BMW M4. So this DIY is going to apply to F80 M3s, F82, F83 M4s, and the F87 M2 without the carbon ceramic brake option. Uh, also for the M2 that has the uh, performance brake option, the slightly larger rotors, this is going to be essentially the exact same job. Um, what we have here are OE semi-floating rotors along with Hawk performance ceramic pads and all the replacement hardware we're going to need to do the job. With that said, let's talk about some of the tools we're going to need to do it and then we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, so some of the tools you need for this job, you want a 17mm socket for taking the lug bolts off, a 5 and 6mm Allen for removing the set screws on the brake rotors, they're different sizes depending on the front and rear axle, 18mm socket or E16 socket or both depending on whether you already have the updated bolts installed or if you still have the original bolts installed and are updating to the new bolts, you want an 18mm and an E16, of course you want a ratchet, it's really handy to have a set of pliers for pulling out the locking pins, you might maybe need a flathead screwdriver for prying, You'll definitely want a thin punch like this in order to push the pins back through for the anti-rattle clip and a hammer to do that with. A torque wrench you can get 110 new meters of torque out of. Of course, if you have power tools, this will make it a lot easier. Uh, I would say two requirements. You will need a, a caliper depressor of this style uh, to push in the pistons all at the same time. If you push one side in without the other side, uh, it's just going to move the pistons out and vice versa. So you need to push them both in at the same time. Having the tool like that to do it going to be a requirement if you decide to do brakes on your own on a car with these types of calipers. And then of course, some kind of hook like this uh, to hold the brake caliper up in place while you're servicing other parts of the brake system. So that said, these are the tools you're going to need. Let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so we're going to start this brake service underneath the hood. What I'm going to do is check the brake fluid level. Um, I want to make sure that when we push the pistons back in that brake fluid is not going to overflow and come out the cap and then make a mess in the engine bay. Uh, so we have um, three of these 10 millimeter quarter turn nuts up here. Literally, I'm just doing it with a sock in my hand and there's normally a push rivet right here but that is currently missing. Uh, we'll just pull the cap back and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the fluid level. Um, might need to siphon a little bit of brake fluid out of here, it's a little bit high. Uh, reason being is obviously when you push the pistons back in, that's going to displace brake fluid. And as brake fluid is displaced, it's going to have nowhere to go except come out the top of the reservoir and then it gets in the engine bay and honestly you're never going to clean that. Plus, brake fluid is pretty corrosive, it will eat paint, uh, you don't want to have that problem either. So uh, we're going to go ahead and siphon a little bit of fluid out of here just to give us some space to work with. And then once uh, at the end, after we've installed the new brakes, we can go ahead and top the brake fluid level off. The uh, reason why it's always worth looking at this is if the brake fluid had been topped off at some point and you have brake pad wear, that's obviously fluid that is not being accounted for in the reservoir level. So when you go and push those pistons back in, it has nowhere to go except overflow the reservoir. That is unless you uh, decide to put bleed bottles on the actual brake calipers themselves. I go back and forth between that, not 100% necessary. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the uh, fluid out of the reservoir. It's already clean. This is relatively new fluid and we'll uh, go from there. All right, first we're going to start off by removing the wheel. Obviously, to do the brakes, the wheel has to come off. Uh, 17 millimeter, assuming it still has factory hardware. I'm going to start by removing the set screws on the brake rotor. Uh, they're 5 millimeter Allens on the front. I'm using an impact gun. Um, what I can say though is these could have a propensity to strip. That's why the impact to me is useful. Make sure that the Allen is 100% seated in the, uh, in the fastener though before you do this. The problem with Allen's is if you don't have it 100% seated, you could round off the edges inside and now you're drilling it out. Now here in the front, we can uh, turn the wheel so that we can uh, work a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and install a lug bolt just in case the rotor decides to fall off at any given time here. In order to remove the pads from the caliper, we need to remove these two pins that hold the securing clip in place. So you're going to want to take a punch of the appropriate size and we're going to go ahead and tap those out. Want to be careful not to uh, damage the pan the caliper, uh, especially if you care about that. If the calipers are in good condition like this, you don't want to damage the paint, so be careful. Once those pins are pulled, you can go ahead and remove the uh, retaining clip for the pads. In this case, uh, the pads have moved a little bit inboard on it, so I'm going to go ahead and take a screwdriver and wedge it out like so. I'm just going to push back on the pistons a little bit with my hands using the pad just to be able to wiggle these out. I 
Now on a multi-piston caliper like this, if you push the pistons in on one side and you don't have something on the other side, the pistons are gonna push out on the opposing side. So when we push these pistons back in, we're gonna use a caliper uh, depressor tool that'll push the pistons in at the same time, which is what you wanna do. Now we're gonna remove the uh, caliper from the knuckle. Uh, the factory bolts are 18s. The new bolts that we're gonna be installing are e-torques, so just be aware of that. If the brakes have been serviced on your car recently, it might have e-torques fasteners on it instead of these 18s. Uh, they are one-time use, so we're gonna replace them. Now we're gonna use a caliper hook like this. We're gonna hang it on the strut so the caliper's out of the way, and also it's not putting any stress on that brake hose. The uh, rotor is stuck to the hub, classic fashion. Got some corrosion between the steel hub and the aluminum hat on the rotor. So I'm just gonna take a hammer and uh, tap the hub here. And we have the brake rotor in, uh, we have the, we have the lug bolt installed just so that when the rotor comes off, we don't uh, have it fall down and hit us in the feet. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean the hub here with a little bit of Scotch-Brite. Obviously a lot of corrosion build up here. So we're gonna go ahead and knock as much of that back as possible. If you have a wire wheel brush on a drill, you can do that as well. I'm just gonna use the Scotch-Brite pad. So the brake rotors on this car are directional between left and right. One way to differentiate this, these are drilled. So when you install it, uh, you basically want the drill holes sort of scooping to the rear. But if you wanted to confirm one more time, these have directional venting. Uh, the venting should be kind of facing towards the rear of the car. And the reason for that is as the wheels traveling forward, this acts as a fan and basically sucks the hot air out from this area. So. Just be aware that when you're installing them, that they are directional. Also, it can only go on the knuckle one way, or the hub. Uh, you have these pins here that the rotor needs to line up on. You can't install them incorrectly. You have these three pins, and you have your two set screw holes. I'm just going to install A lug bolt again, just before I install these set screws, just to kind of keep the rotor in place. To make life easier for the next person, I'm just using a bit of this Lickamoly LM508 anti-seize on the set screw. Just a dab, just a dab will do you. And I am reusing the original set screws. You can replace them if you wish, but there's nothing wrong with these. Um, and the only thing the set screw does is just holds the rotor on when the rest of the brakes are not installed. Um, so they're not really that important. But for the sake of doing everything properly, we're going to put the set screws back in. And now the set screws are installed and the rotor's not going anywhere. We can go ahead and remove the lug bolt and that's actually exactly what the set screws do. It just holds the rotor to the hub when the caliper's not installed. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our caliper onto the knuckle. This is what I said about the new bolts. These are one-time use, and these are now E16s instead of uh, 18 millimeter. And the reason why these are replacement bolts is you can see the serrated washer on the bottom. Uh, it's ideal to replace these because of that locking mechanism. So just one extra thing, but highly recommended to do so. Torque spec on these bolts is 110 newton meters. We come in here with our uh, caliper depressor tool. We're gonna go ahead and push the pistons back. They should move back in easily. Shouldn't have to force it. I'm just making sure that they go all the way back in. Now there's a lot of different options of pads uh, for this style caliper. Uh, you know, we offer pretty much all the Hawk Performance pads, the DS2500s from Ferrodo. Uh, the really nice thing about these calipers is because they're top loaded. Uh, you can go from having your street pad on it, if you decide to go an autocross or a track day, and then you can go ahead and swap in your track pads. Uh, super convenient, super easy. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use a little bit of the grease included with um, the Hawk pads. And right here, this is where the pad sits inside the caliper. I'm just going to apply the thinnest layer of grease. You don't need to overdo it on this. In fact, you could install it dry too, uh, but I'm just doing a little bit of grease here because we cleaned off that section of the caliper. 
and right now it's just aluminum, so I want to give this the opportunity to be able to move a little bit. Uh, BMW from the factory, they do put some grease on the face of the pistons. I don't think that's necessary. There's also this backing plate or this anti-squeal shim anyway, so I don't think it's going to be necessary. Uh, depending on the pads you install, there may be some brake noise. Uh, that's just sort of the nature when you're looking at performance brakes. Now these Hawk ceramic pads or street performance ceramic pads should be very clean, which is what the owner of this car wants. Uh, but should still be a really good pedal feel. And then, like I said, the pads just slide in like that. Super convenient. All right, this is our uh, pins. They physically hold the caliper in place along with the rattle clip. I'm going to go ahead and clean the corrosion off of these. I don't think there's any need to replace these unless, let's say, uh, you know, the little locking mechanism over here, which sort of butts up against the caliper, is missing or damaged. Uh, you can just go ahead and reuse these and replace them all the time. So. I don't think there's a need to replace them. Let's go ahead and take some Scotch-Brite and go ahead and uh, wipe away any of the surface corrosion and just clean it up so we can reinstall easier. Yeah, you can see how nicely uh, that cleans up once you remove all that surface corrosion and all the brake dust from it. So there's really no need to replace these, like I said, unless there's physically something wrong or this little uh, locking clip here is missing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our braking hardware here. I like to start from the top. I'm gonna go ahead and take our pin with the piloted point first. And we wanna make sure that it slides through the caliper, the hole in the um, caliper, and then also the hole in the brake pad. We wanna make sure it kinda of comes through here like so, so it kinda of goes through this hook on our clip. And then uh, we can go ahead and push it into the hole on the other side of the caliper. Again, wanna make sure it passes through the brake pad and then it also lines up uh, with the hole on the caliper. Once you have the top hooked in, I will come down here, I will take my thumb, depress our clip. Then we can slide our braking hardware through. Now you might wrestle a little bit with the bottom just because the clip is physically pushing the brake pad. That's okay. Uh, you can actually push on the brake pad from the outer edge here and push it back so the holes line up. And once we have those holes lined up, I'm just gonna go ahead and give the pin a couple of taps. It should go in very easily. If it's not going in, it means it's not lined up. So don't force it in, uh, just be gentle with it. Uh, Cause you could damage the pin, you could damage the uh, caliper. So once everything's lined, it, lined up, you can just go ahead and tap this in. And they should go in very easy. Like so. Barely had to hit that, was able to do it just with the very edge of the hammer. And there you go, the front brakes are now installed. And just wanted to have a little note here, because we are doing uh, the front right brakes, or filming the front right brakes, the right side does not have, or the front right rather, does not have a padware sensor, only the front left. Uh, so right here we have our padware sensor, hooks onto the inboard pad, runs up along here, hooks onto a bracket off the strut, hooks up to another bracket up here, runs up here to a bracket and then it sits inside this junction housing. Super simple routing, uh, just wanna make a little note of it. You're not gonna see it on the right side or the front right, uh, but you will be dealing with that on the front left. So we just kinda of wanna show you what that looks like once it's installed. All right, so that's how you go about replacing the brake rotors and brake pads on an F82 M4. Like we said in the beginning, this can be the same for an F80 M3 or an F87 M2. Uh, really any vehicle without the M carbon ceramic brake option. Although technically, if it did have M carbon ceramic brakes, it's still very much the same process, just a lot more expensive, unfortunately. Uh, but overall, very simple to do, something you could definitely do at home by yourself. All you need is a handful of tools. I'd say the biggest thing you'd wanna have is the proper caliper depressor, uh, just to make sure that those pistons are pressed in correctly. But of course, we have an FCP Euro, just in case you're looking for it. Other than that, obviously, before you drive the car, make sure that you pump the brakes to make sure that the pedal is firm. Worst thing you can do is throw it in drive or throw it in gear, start driving down the street and realize you don't have a brake pedal. So make sure that you pump the brake pedal. Also, make sure you brake in the brake pads. You want to go ahead and bed those in. Do a couple of stops from 30 miles an hour to almost zero. Go ahead and build that up. You want to put some heat into the brakes. Hawk has a very specific set of instructions on how to do that, but that brake-in procedure is going to depend on the brake pad manufacturer, but generally just want to put some heat in them, get some transfer between the pads and the rotors. And once the pedal feels good, 
you're pretty much good to go from that point forward. So I hope you learned a lot in this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below. Hit that like button if you like this video and hit subscribe. We have a lot more videos on the way. As always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.